So what can we say about Minoan religion? Is it a Bronze Age version of the Neolithic goddess culture that Gimbutas talk about? I leave it as an open question. So we can see that divinity is immanent, ktonic. This word ktonic refers to the earth, to the power and the potential of the earth. What comes from the earth, like this wealth and richness of power to regenerate life, to create plants, to nurture human beings and animals. So she's a mountain mother. We will see this again, coming back up again and again in the whole course. What is a mountain mother? She represents power and protection, birth, death, and regeneration. The goddess is in nature. Nature is the goddess. Nature is sacred. But what does it actually mean for them? It's We really need to stretch our imagination and uh, be careful of what we project on, uh, on this. Because also there is evidence of human sacrifice on Crete in the case of extreme crisis in during a series of earthquakes they found there is the archaeologists found the remains of three people one of them probably was uh, a sacrificial victim a young man and then there was a priestess and an older man that were killed by the earthquake itself so in this extreme situation they sacrificed one victim and but they died anyway in because the the earthquake came and destroyed the temple where they were so and then there is also evidence of cannibalism in one instance that i know of so does this mean that this was not a pre-patriarchal culture or can this mean that these were extreme situations that called for actions that to our views are violent or they not justified in the context of this amazing goddess that brings life <laughs> and fertility to everything? Or can we really stretch our imagination? Maybe the sacrificial victim was a volunteer. Maybe it was an honor to be sacrificed to the gods to save everybody else. And also for the cannibalism evidence, it's really just one that I know of. So it was not a common, these were not common practices. Their culture was not funded on that. But these are good examples to say, hey, these people are not flower children, harmony, love and peace. There are aspects of them that are wild and raw and to our eyes maybe dehumanizing or not human. So, yeah, this is also a question for everyone to think about. And these are, this is the famous snake goddess, <laughs> so iconic with her cat on top of her head. We don't actually know if the cat was really belonging to the head because she was found without head. But then the head was nearby and Arthur Evans put it there. So that's also to say sometimes the archaeologists put things together, especially you know, 100 years ago, they would do fakes, but she's not a fake. It's just we don't actually know if the head and the cat belong to her. So and then let's look at male representations. The Lily Prince of Knossos. This is the guy that Arthur Evans said, this is the king of Knossos. Let's call him Prince. But actually, again, he was made, it's like a sort of Frankenstein-esque operation that uh, Arthur Evans did in reconstructing this fresco because the headdress usually is on top of women or sphinxes. So um, he put different pieces together. We don't know also if it's a king or maybe he's the athlete of the year or female bull leaper. We don't really see if there is breasts and also the color of the skin. This is a total reconstruction, so it's not the original fragments. So the debate is still open. We don't know <laughs> if this actually was a guy or not. And just to see to the left, there is um, a drawing of a priestess wearing the same headdress of the Lily Prince. 
And here we see, I played around a bit with what I found online with reconstructions of the Lily Prince, trying to make him male and to make it something because he was supposed to be the guy sitting on the throne. So he had to be in the eyes of these early researchers in Knossos and Crete. He had to be the representative of a male ruler. And the idea of kinship is inherent in the very name we use, kinship, kingdom. Now, you know, with my friends we and other women, we play around with the word queendom. <laughs> but back then, there was no queendom <laughs> in the times of Arthur Evans. And also, we see this other reconstruction of uh, all the guys that are the beginners of civilizations. And we see our Lily Prince there, he's super manly and muscular. And so, I wanted to put this here. See, he's representing Minoan civilization, and there is other representative of other civilizations. I'm not sure if this one to the left could be a woman, maybe. I don't know if someone knows. But generally, this could be a boys' club, as we can see. And I'm just underlining what are some of the patriarchal biases that we, you know, that was were part of archaeological history. And now, maybe with some new research, there is new interpretations and trying to go beyond the, main, the patriarchal biases. So there, this shows a tendency to make androcentric assumptions about political and cultural structures, regardless of the gynocentric symbolism. Gynocentric symbolism is symbolism related to women, like gynecologist, <laughs> it's the same word. <laughs> And here again, we see another reconstruction of the guy. They even took away the benches around. <laughs> it's just the one guy sitting on this throne. And here again, some more images of Knossos with the male ruler. So we don't know who was ruling in Knossos. There is different theories. And the one I prefer is to point to Council of Priestesses. Who they were, how old they were, how they were selected, this we don't know. But there are indications to po that point not to a one male ruler, like it is in most of the other civilizations, but to something different. And I really love this challenge to stretch our imagination. And here we have other examples of representations of uh, uh, males. The harvester was a group of guys, a um, group of men, probably coming back from the field or going to the field. So maybe this was a society, because also a very interesting theory is says that probably uh, the society, uh, like the people, the, the Minoans, could have been divided in societies according to age and gender instead of kin. And this would make everything much more equal. And so you would belong to the society of the teenagers or the pre-teenagers or the post-teenagers independently from your kin, from your family of origin. Because in Minoan society, we do have richer people and less rich people, but the difference is not huge. Or even rich people, are they the traders? But we have to really stretch our imagination to imagine that wealth did not automatically translate into power over or into being able to coerce other people to do what you want. And so I will speak about this more when we look at the palaces. So... Other images of men, this is the Lord of the Animals. These are more rare images, but maybe this is our early Dionysus, a Lord of wild beasts, like there was a Potnia Teron, this, uh, the goddess on the right. She's also flanked by animals. She will, she's a typical iconographical representation. We will see it also later associated to other goddesses coming from afterwards. So 
these usually are these images are connected to deities that are connected to vegetation rituals, fertility rituals. So again, in the context of our Dionysus. And here, this is interesting. This is a master, it's called the master impression. So it's the impression of a ring. We don't have the actual ring, but imagine this thing is like three centimeters big. It was found in the, in the excavation of a house, I think in Khania, if I'm not wrong. And this is so important. Imagine that person that found this three centimeter piece that actually is a representation of a man in a clear position of power and dominance. And I put it next to the mountain goddess. You see, they both have a staff. They exhibit what is called the gesture of command. Do they protect different realms? Because the goddess is uh, in this wild nature, mountain, wild felines context, and the man is more in an urban context. Is this uh, representation closer to the Mycenaean times? So are we closer to this cultural shift towards uh, a different <laughs> value system? We don't know. Lots of different theories. 